Um, we have uh, we have some friends from PHFE WIC with us today to talk about the latest with um, with WIC in the LA County area and um, referrals connecting families with WIC, um, the latest in terms of services and so on. So thank you all so much for joining. Um, I know Blanca, the uh, manager, outreach manager, is uh, kind of leading the show, but we have a few others and she can introduce them as well. So um, Blanca, I'm just going to hand it over to you and you can, you can start us off. Sounds great. Thank, thank you, you so much, Steve. Uh, welcome, everybody. And thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to be able to provide updates on the WIC program. I know you are all aware and familiarized with the WIC program, but WIC is continuing to get better and better. As we modernize, even though it's going slowly, we are ensuring to be able to continue to provide wonderful services to our clientele. Just as you all are out there uh, doing your outreach, trying to gain uh, more clientele to be able to participate in your wonderful services that you provide for the Welcome Baby program, we are out there also trying to ensure that we are providing the best services that we can for our clientele. So basically today, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be providing you just with some updates about the WIC program and how to refer. Okay, so give me one moment. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen so I can go ahead and get to my PowerPoint presentation. Okay, go ahead and do that. And here we go. So today we are going to have a couple of speakers in providing some information about the WIC program. And uh, a few of our speakers uh, are going to be discussing. One will be Cindy Clapp, who's our Deputy Director of Breastfeeding Services. So she'll be providing some updates on breastfeeding. Sagrario Nielsen, who is our Deputy Director of Nutrition Services and Project. And then myself, I'll be providing you just with some few updates uh, which I'm Blanca Vargas, and I work for the, again, as Steve said, I do uh, uh, manage the outreach department, and I will be providing you with some updates on how to refer and a few updates here and there on what is actually new on the WIC program and what to expect in the near future as well. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Cindy, who is going to be our first speaker for today's webinar. Okay, Cindy, go ahead. Hi everyone, it's so nice to be here with you this afternoon. And as Blanca mentioned, I oversee the breastfeeding services at PHFE WIC. So I'm just gonna go ahead and share with you a little bit about what we are offering to our families so that when you're out talking to uh, the people participating in your programs, you can also share this information with them. So Blanca, next slide, please. It's taking just a second of a delay, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I don't see it going. There we go. There we go. All right. So um, I, I, I would like to go ahead before Cindy starts to go ahead and discuss a couple of the objectives for today. So today we're going to go ahead and explain a, a, a available breastfeeding services and support for eligible WIC families, review the current process for requesting therapeutic formula for our most special infants and children on WIC, review our current hybrid WIC services, share examples on how we actively engage families remotely and in person, and demonstrate how families can begin the enrollment process on our public website. All right, let me go ahead and hit next. And here we go with Cindy. Thank you, Blanca. So um, this slide gives us an overview of some of the services that WIC offers. And uh, WIC is really committed to the uh, counseling and um, education of our families. Prenatally, uh, breastfeeding is one of the topics that we cover extensively so that we teach our families um, all of the benefits of breastfeeding, what to expect when they're breastfeeding, what to expect in the hospital, uh, what kind of support WIC can provide, um, and also the services that we offer um, after they have their baby. Our public website, which Blanca is going to show you later, also has um, amazing handouts and uh, booklets and beautiful um, uh, documents where the participant can access all of this information also after the counseling. 
Um, another thing we talk about a lot is um, what we call baby behavior. And that is related to um, sort of moms being like a baby whisperer, if you want to think about it that way, that we talk about um, how moms can watch their baby and see based on how the baby is acting, what the baby needs. So if the baby is crying, it doesn't always mean the baby's hungry. Sometimes the baby could be too hot or too cold or overstimulated or not feeling well. So we try to teach all of these different points to our families, mostly to help them with um, feeding their baby really um, effectively, um, being responsive to their baby and also not overfeeding their baby in addition to helping them be more successful with breastfeeding. So those are some of the main topics that we cover related to education prenatally and in the early postpartum period. Um, also, we offer a variety of breast pumps, which I'm going to tell you more about. And then WIC is really com committed to providing culturally diverse um, education and materials um, by offering um, different support groups in different languages, offering a lot of different staff that speak the languages of the participants so that the, the person in this really intimate period of their life feels um, feel supported and connected in a way that they value. Okay, next slide, please, Blanca. Thank you. So one of the programs that we're really proud of at PHFE WIC is our Breastfeeding Peer Counselor Program. And it's offered at many of our sites, although not all of them. And uh, we have a special grant for this program. And what it is, is that women who are the peer counselors are have similar experiences to our, to our participants. And they are able to offer what we call enhanced breastfeeding services. So they, um, they provide support um, in caseload management so that the same person continues to talk to the mom every time so that they can build a relationship with this family. They call them um, a lot more frequently than um, WIC is, um, you know, usually has time to do. So um, in, for example, in the first month, every single week, a new mom would get a call um, from the peer counselor to make sure that they're feeling supported, to answer any questions that the mom has, and uh, specifically to provide them to a lactation consultant if they're if they're experiencing any challenges. So this is a really um, it's a really beautiful program, and we are the families that participate really love it. And we are also um, trying to stay relevant related to technology and the way we deliver services. And we can provide services in person, over the phone, and virtually through platforms like Zoom. So we're trying to. Uh, stay up on the technology and meet the moms where they are. Next slide, please, Blanca. So um, as I mentioned, um, it's really important for us to engage with our families in um, ways that they feel are most helpful to them. So every single month we offer support groups in these six languages, and uh, we have a lot of a lot of participants and non-participants that join. So you don't have to be a WIC participant in order to participate in these support groups. And the public website that Blanca is going to show us has all of this information about when the sessions are and how to connect to that. Cinemoms is one of our programs that we also um, are just over the moon excited about and proud of. As we know, um, Black families have um, uh, outcomes of maternal mortality and um, birth outcomes that are less um, desirable than other ethnicities. So this specific program promotes breastfeeding and um, parenting and WIC services for our Black and African American families. And it creates a, a cultural space where they can empower the Black women 
who are um, both participating in WIC and not participating in WIC to <clears throat> have the healthiest outcomes for their babies and their families. So um, they have uh, their own um, website at cinemoms.org. It can also be reached by our public website. And we would love that um, all families, that um, all Black and African-American families with um, either pregnant or young children get connected to this resource. Next slide, please. So we always get a lot of questions from our um, community-based organizations about what type of breast pumps WIC provides and how a participant would be eligible for them. So um, after the baby is born, the staff would be completing an assessment with the mom to talk to her about how the breastfeeding is going and what her goals are. And after that assessment, if the staff feel that the mom would benefit from a pump, then we work with uh, we work with them to to provide them one. So um, we often use this yellow one, the Symphony pump, that is um, available in the hospitals. Um, we we do have a lot of new programs, so some of the pumps we're using are also the ones that are a little bit older, but still probably our favorite, the Blue Lactina pump that is also um, a, a, what we call a hospital grade pump. And it helps the mom both establish and maintain her milk supply. So early on, this is the pump that we would be using with um, a new mom as she's trying to get um, the breastfeeding off to a good start. And after the mom has breastfed for a while and her milk supply is established, we can also have them trade in the bigger pump for this personal pump on the right where she would be able to keep it indefinitely and then have it to use throughout um, her lactation journey with this baby and then any future babies. Next slide, please, Blanca. So as I was mentioning, we have um, some special programs that are using our pumps. And as we talk about equity amongst our families and um, you know the community, we want to make sure that WIC moms are not having a delay in services um, as um, a weekend approaches or a holiday when they're discharged from the hospital before they get connected with WIC. So what we've done is we've set up what we call pump closets. And we have so far eight hospitals that we're working with. And the hospitals actually have WIC pumps at the hospital. And if a participant, a WIC participant is needing a pump upon discharge, the hospital LC will actually issue this pump to them and then send WIC the information that the pump was issued and that the mom had her baby so that on the next business day, we can connect with them. So uh, the moms that um, can't afford to rent a pump from the hospital um, don't have a delay in being able to have what they need in order to get breastfeeding off to a good start. So this is one of our programs we're really proud of related to, um, to the community engagement and the continuity of care for our families. Next slide, please, Blanca. And then we always want to be available to our families if they have a, a question regarding breastfeeding or they uh, need help with uh, getting a referral to a lactation consultant, they have a question about their food package. So this um, infant feeding helpline, uh, we have staff that are uh, well-trained, um, all certified lactation educators, and they are able to answer questions that moms and actually anyone in the community has re related to breastfeeding. Um, they also answer lots of questions about WIC services and food packages. So um, we're really proud of, uh, again, the staff that work on this line and that we are able to offer this service to the community. And we take over a thousand calls a month on this line. So it is a really well-used resource that the, um, both the staff and the community appreciate. And I think that was my last slide and I will now turn it over to Sagrario. Thank you. 
Thank you so much, Cindy. I, I truly uh, am thankful to the breastfeeding department because my daughter's 19 now, but I still remember the day I had to call them and that helpline and just get guidance on what to do. I work for WIC and I'm telling you, I had amnesia. I couldn't remember anything. So the, the breastfeeding department is amazing. They're so skilled and so um, patient with all the moms. So I appreciate what they can contribute to healthy babies in LA County. So I'm here to present to you, my name is Sagan Nielsen. I'm the Deputy Director for Nutritional Services. My department handles a lot of the medical formulas or what we also refer to them as therapeutic formulas. So if the baby is not able to get breastfed or exclusively breastfed, maybe they do need formulas. So let me start off with something simple. Let's talk about our standard formulas or what our, we call our contract formulas that do not require a prescription. So we can go to the next slide, Blanca. So we have three milk-based formulas and one soy-based formula. These three milk-based formulas do not require a prescription for our families to receive these formulas. So we do have Similac Advance, which is a standard milk-based formula. It's for healthy full-term infants. It comes in a powder and a concentrate form. And the other two milk-based formulas are Similac Total Comfort and Similac Sensitive. Usually, most infants in most hospitals, they normally have the standard contract formula, which is the Similac. And if they do need any other formulas, usually the doctors would recommend them to transition to something different. But those are the three options available through WIC for the milk-based formula. And let's go to the next slide. And this is our soy-based formula. Our soy-based formula is a slightly different manufacturer. The previous one, which was the Similac, it's an Abbott formula. This is a Mead Johnson formula. It's Infamil Prosobi, a plant-based soy formula. And just a reminder that uh, soy formulas and Prosobi are not recommended for preterm infants. Let's go to the next slide. So now let's talk about these medical formulas, or you may also hear them referred to as therapeutic formulas. Um, when an infant or a child needs a nutritional product or an infant needs medical formula, they do require a prescription. And they require a prescription to be issued either through WIC or if the doctor submits these requests through a pharmacy, they would need it through a pharmacy, a prescription. So let's go to the next slide, Blanca, because we're going to talk about now the steps. What are the steps that the family needs to follow to help streamline this process for they won't deal with the delay or issues of trying to get these formulas issued to them because they do require a prescription. It's really, really important that the doctor is clear. And this is something that we want to communicate as much as we can out there is that if the infant or the child has current Medi-Cal, they have a current Medi-Cal plan, the expectation is that the medical provider will submit prior authorization for that prescription for that prescription product to Medi-Cal for approval. This would mean that the product would go through a pharmacy. WIC is a provider of last resort. Of course, there's gonna be cases where infants um, encounter problems with the pharmacy, or if there's any challenges that you hear from the family saying, hey, you know, my formula wasn't issued through the pharmacy because they didn't carry it or they denied me. If there's ever an issue with the pharmacy, we can issue that. But let's go ahead and go to the next slide and talk about step two. So now, if in fact we are issuing the formula either through the pharmacy or through WIC, we need to make sure that WIC has documentation. And the reason is because besides the fact, even though the family may be receiving this formula through a pharmacy, we still are able to issue foods, foods, the infant foods at the six month mark. And we do give the adult foods that basically I call the adult foods, like the milk and the cheese and the and the yogurt and the breads and the grains at 12 months. So if an infant is receiving formula through a pharmacy, we still need a documentation of that formula request and if they have any food restrictions. And we're, I'm going to show you the form in just a minute where there's a form that we use at WIC that's used all throughout the state of California. It's the same form that's used at all the WIC agencies in California. And it's a form that has a very comprehensive and includes all the elements that need to be filled out. But if the child is now 12 months, maybe the child is two years old, three years old, we also need documentation, even though they're getting it through the pharmacy to be able to issue the food items, we do need a prescription that notes if there's food restrictions 
or if there's not a food restriction. So let's go to the next slide and you will see this form. It seems like it's a lot, I know, but trust me, it does streamline the process because everything is there for the medical provider. They just check off boxes. Before, a lot of it was a freehand item and oftentimes they would forget things. So the state went back and forth and revised this form and really try to make it capture all the elements that we need to have included on a form when they're requesting these special formulas. As you see on the first page, very specific information is asked regarding the formula name, the type of formula, is it a powder, is it a concentrate, they need to put the amount, the duration, diagnosis. And then you'll see the second page talks about food restrictions. If there's no food restrictions, the doctor can just note no food restrictions, no problem. If there are food restrictions, they check off food restrictions and mark off the corresponding boxes depending on the age of the child or the infant, okay? The other thing that we always look for is, is there a signature? Signature, provider's name, contact information, and a date. When was the form completed? So you think, wow, that's a lot of information. Oftentimes, a lot of these infants are being discharged from the hospital. Oftentimes, they may be transitioned to a different formula. Maybe they started with a contract formula, and now they're being transitioned to something different. Maybe the doctor doesn't have this form, which is okay. Let's go ahead and go to the next slide. So WIC is able to accept a request for formula, be it on that form, through a prescription pad. It can be written on a prescription pad or hospital discharge paperwork. Remember, we can also try to help the doctor if they need to be connected to the pharmacy. But if the prescription is coming to our office and we need to help facilitate this process of issuing the formula, it can come in any of those three formats. On the actual WIC form, on a prescription pad, or the hospital discharge paperwork. But now let's go to the next slide. It's really important that these elements are included when it's on a prescription pad or if it's on a discharge paperwork. As much as possible, we try to make sure we get all these nine items, which is the date of when it was completed, the child's name, date of birth, medical diagnosis, the name of the product, duration, the actual amount that they will be taking in daily, the medical provider's signature, the address and the contact number. But now let's say they bring a prescription that only has two of the nine things or three of the nine things. Whatever it may be missing, we get verbal consent from the parent. We do a text messaging and we get consent from the parents to reach out to the medical providers to obtain anything that may be missing. So just know there could be some hiccups with some of these families. They may bring incomplete documentation. We will try to do as much as we can to get the missing information for them as well. So let's go to the next slide. The challenges that we often see is that um, the documentation that was submitted may have been incomplete related to the diagnosis. So as you see here on this list, a lot of these uh, noted items here are more of symptoms, but not necessarily a medical diagnosis. So if the prescription, for example, has any of these noted issues only and not a medical diagnosis, like for example, milk protein allergies, would be a good medical diagnosis that would justify issuing them, for example, alimentum or neutramogen. But if it only said colic or fussy, we would have to call the doctor to try to get that information. So just know there are some restrictions that even Medi-Cal, the pharmacies, if they see these type of symptoms only and not a medical diagnosis, they will require more complete documentation. So let's go to the next slide. And I'm sorry, I might be going too fast for all this, but just know at the end of my presentation, there's a video that's through the state that explains all this to you as well. So if you miss anything, you can watch this recording or you can watch the state video. We do have cases where infants and children have no Medi-Cal, which is fine. They might have covered California, maybe they have private insurance, not a problem. WIC can go ahead and facilitate the process of either issuing it on the WIC card or we submit it through the state if it's something that we don't issue on the WIC card. Or like I shared, there are cases where the pharmacy doesn't cover the product. Maybe the pharmacy doesn't have it. I don't know if you've ever had an experience where you go to a pharmacy, the doctor wrote you a prescription and they don't carry that particular name brand prescription that you were requesting and you want that name brand. That does happen with formulas. So there are some pharmacies that may carry the product that they're asking for and some pharmacies may not. 
So if they have issues with getting their actual formula, please have them reach out to the WIC office and we can try to connect them to a pharmacy that can issue it to them, or we can try to facilitate issuing it on the card or through the state. We can go to the next slide. I'm actually uh, done, but you'll see a lot of a lot of information here. I try to keep it more general because I know you're servicing all throughout LA County. Um, so we have different offices, but this is a these are standard documents that can be used on any WIC agency. So the first link that I showed there is actually the page through the state that shows all, all these links that you see here. It's a very comprehensive page that explains everything to the medical provider, to the families. It's a very good link for families to use if, in fact, they have questions about how to go about getting their medical formulas. We also have a letter that we sometimes send to the doctors if, in fact, they want to know why we're saying, hey, you need to go through the pharmacy. Um, it's explaining to them why Medi-Cal is the payer of first resort. They need to go through the Medi-Cal plan first to try to get the formula. So that letter does explain that information to the doctor and through the state. We also have uh, the link there, which is the form that I shared with you earlier. That's like I said, it's a standard form that's used throughout the state of California. All the WIC agencies use this formula form for requesting formula or nutritional products. The next link talks about Medi-Cal, what covered, what's covered by Medi-Cal and what's covered by WIC. So you'll notice that if when you look at that link, there are some formulas that are not covered by Medi-Cal that WIC will need to cover. So there are some cases where there's some things that are covered by one and not by the other. So it's helpful for doctors to look at that reference. And the last one is the video. It's about a five minute video, maybe about 10 minutes. And it goes over this whole process that the doctors just need to know how to submit a request, why they need to do it, what are the things to include. Pretty much everything I just explained is actually in that video as well. You know, I, I'll hold the questions. If you have any questions, we'll hold them until the end and um, I'll transition to Blanca, but uh, thank you very much for your time. I was trying to keep it comprehensive and quick. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Sagrario. All right, everyone. So it's my turn now. What I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and share our public website um, so that you're able to, if you can, if you have a mobile device or you are on your laptop viewing this uh, webinar, take some time to be able to log on to our website. And uh, the website address is on the screen, which is P as in Paul, H as in Harry, F as in Frank, E. WIC.org, and it'll take you to our landing page, Public Health Foundation Enterprises WIC. Now, as Sagrario was mentioning also, in California, there are about 84 WIC agencies. We are one of 84, and we're one of the largest nationwide. We do service over 200 individuals on a monthly basis. And in total in California, we're servicing about a million individuals and caseload is definitely growing. However, we are not connecting with every eligible individual in California. And so what we would like to be able to provide you is information on uh, if you connect with a family that is not currently participating in the WIC program, it could be many reasons, multiple reasons as to why families are not participating. One, and it could be that maybe they just don't see their um, WIC office anymore. Maybe physically their WIC office is no longer there, right? Or it could be that maybe they don't know that they qualify, or maybe they just are hesitant in applying for the WIC program. Currently, WIC is very accessible and multiple families actually with them not even knowing can actually qualify for the WIC program. And so I'll discuss just a little bit more information and show you where to find this information on eligibility, who qualifies, and um, uh, just a bit more information about what's new in our program, and then some information on our landing page here, and the handout steps that Cindy discussed about where you could find those as well, in the event that you wanted to use any handouts for your family. So, um, because the Welcome Baby program also services LA County as we do, there are other WIC agencies in LA County as well. So we overlap and we call them our sister agencies. I have uh, informed Steve that I will be providing some contact information 
in, uh, for our sister agencies as well. Uh, however, if you do come across any clientele and they want to apply for the WIC program, they can definitely apply through uh, either our website, and I'll give you some information on how to apply. And in the event that they want to be able to walk into a WIC center closest to them, it's so easy for them to transfer, an individual to transfer over to a WIC center that's closer to them, as long as they're living in California. Okay, so here you can see our landing page. And uh, there are many tabs on our landing page. We have apply button in multiple places and uh, a lot of wonderful information. So overall, the WIC program, we have, we have heard there's four core services that we provide. We have heard of two. One was the breastfeeding services. And then uh, secondly is going to be our nutrition services that we provide our clients. And then we have healthy foods and resources. And the resources is where you fall in under the Welcome Baby program, okay? So if 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 at all you need to go back to get familiarized as to what WIC provides, it's on our landing page and there's information. If you click on each tab, it'll give you a summary of each uh, core service that we provide. And I'm going to go ahead and go back. I know I'm uh, scrolling on this page, but I really like to uh, ensure that we are providing a live tutorial on our uh, overall WIC uh, PHFB uh, website. Okay, so now here under how WIC works, you'll get the WIC services again. You'll be able to see who qualifies. You'll get information about the California WIC card, which is really great because now with clients, uh, they have the option. They have the option to be able to do their nutrition education virtually or in person. So we still have those options for families to come in uh, of one of our WIC sites and complete their WIC education in person, or they can do it online. So as I was mentioning before, WIC is so much more accessible because clients don't have to actually walk in how they used to in the past. They don't have to worry about physical checks anymore because they have the WIC card, which is uh, uploaded on a monthly basis for eligible families participating on the WIC program. The one great thing also too about WIC now is that families do have access to a WIC app, which provides, it's like their best friend. It provides a lot of information, their current benefits, their future appointment. They can sign up to do the WIC online um, nutrition education uh, from the app. They can also check for neighboring WIC approved stores, WIC clinics. Um, as they click on their benefits, they can check to see what benefits are available, uh, wh which are approved and which are not. So it's a very resourceful WIC app. They can use the scanning mechanism to scan foods to see if they're WIC approved. It's just a wonderful app to have. And um, it, 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 we're hoping that as uh, WIC modernizes, we're able to modernize some of our tools as well. You're able to see our WIC foods. And with our WIC foods, each uh, individual is in a uh, specific category. If it's a pregnant, an infant, a child, uh, breastfeeding, you'll be able to see the WIC foods that each individual can receive on the WIC program. Uh, we have some tutorials on shopping for your WIC foods because it can be challenging for some families, especially for some families that may not speak English, or Spanish or what have you. We have other families that speak other languages such as uh, Russian, Cambodian, Vietnamese, et cetera. So we do have ways in which uh, our families uh, can access uh, tools and resources to be able to better utilize their WIC foods. Okay, and so um, we also have an apply button here and a couple of facts. Under the learn and grow tab is where you'll be able to find the WIC Zoom classes. We also have them on our landing page and I'll be able to show you, but I'm gonna go ahead and click on our breastfeeding and chest feeding uh, tab so that you can get a little bit more information as to what Cindy was talking about. Here we have our Cinnamon support circle. And again, if you click on uh, the tab, you'll be able to get a lot of wonderful information, wonderful resources, links. We have our breastfeeding support groups on Zoom. Uh, we are we are on social media, which is amazing, right? We're on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, uh, and much more so that we are readily accessible. 
We have our infant feeding helpline here, the information on uh, lactation consultants, how to connect, phone numbers, uh, all, any information that you may need uh, in regards to um, lactation, you'll be able to connect and find in, in, on, under the breastfeeding and chest feeding tab, okay? Now, let me just go ahead and scroll a little bit up because I want to be able to show you some of our wonderful uh, handouts that you can find under Learn and Grow if you choose infants and children. Also, you'll be able to see some resources and some handouts. Our handouts are, these are handouts that we would have normally give, uh, given to clientele during their nutrition education sessions. And uh, they're accessible here, so they're at the reach of their phone. So we'll go ahead and send them a link through our confidential texting system for a specified uh, handout uh, per se. So in this case, for example, we have, oh, here's our welcome baby program on here too that we would love to be able to share with our families, right? And then um, we have like, for example, let your baby set the pace. We have information on bottle feeding and what have you. They're very colorful. They're, they have a lot of wonderful information, easy to read, easy to get to. And so the great thing about, about our website is that you do see stuff here in English, but you are able to change the language uh, to, uh, to Spanish as well. And so we're working on other languages and I'll show you where to uh, change it uh, gradually. It has taken a little bit, but we're definitely working on it so that folks who want to access information on our, our website, they're able to access it in the language that they prefer. Okay. All right. So just here down in this tab, you'll be able to see the English. You can get Spanish, Vietnamese, uh, Chinese, and I want to say this one was Korean because that was the last one we were working on. All right, so um, now I want to go ahead and go over to um, our resources because I would like you to be able to see the family resources that we provide our, our clientele. And we have general, because it's our fourth core service, information on mental health, food assistance, uh, pregnancy and breastfeeding information, housing and shelter, uh, anything that possibly uh, families may want to learn more about infants and children, healthcare, in-home support. And here's the directory of home visiting programs that is on our website as well, accessible to our clientele. And so currently right now, as we um, try our best to provide resources to our families, uh, because the method of how we provide our resources has now a variety of options. Uh, before we were able to provide physical uh, flyers, maybe we were able to uh, help a family to be able to connect with uh, an organization, let's say Welcome Baby. And in person, it's just so much easier to be able to connect a, a, a client and ensure that they're connecting. Currently now, because our agency does provide options in uh, offering our clientele their services, they could either do it by phone, online, or in person. The majority of our clients do love the, the, the opportunity to do their nutrition education virtually. And so therefore, that leads us to be able to send out resources via text. So Basically, if somebody is asking about in-home support and then um, they're wondering a little bit more information about parenting or what have you, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and send them a text link with some information. So in this case, it would be the Directory of Home Visiting Programs, and they'll go ahead and receive this text message uh, on their phone. But here in lies where the challenge is, is that once we're sending out the referral through the text texting system, now it's up to the client to be able to follow up. So that's where we uh, are now uh, seeing that we do lose some of our, our clientele in regards to the referrals and that we hope that they're able to connect. And so usually what we'll do is at their next visit, either two, three months uh, from now, we, we, we will follow up. Did you connect to the Welcome Baby program? For an example, right? And but therein lies another challenge as well. Sometimes we don't get to see them again until a few months later. And uh, although we strive our best to be able to provide them appointments, future appointments, as you all know, sometimes it's, it makes it a little bit difficult to connect with families via by phone or what have you. And uh, the hope is that we're able to connect and follow up. And for the most part, we do. But 
there are multiple times where it there has been a challenge where we have not been able to connect or follow up until a few months down the road. Okay. All right. So that's information about our um, uh, resources that we provide. And uh, here under for professionals, you'll find some information on how to refer someone to WIC. And all the information that I have provided you uh, in regards to what WIC provides is here, very a summary, very, very easy to review. Here's the WIC card, who you can refer to WIC, okay? And one of the great things about uh, referring clients to WIC is that some families that do not know if they may or may not qualify for the WIC program, it's okay to still refer them, not a problem. But some do not know that if they're receiving Medi-Cal, CalFresh, or CalWorks, and they're a qualifying individual, meaning they're either pregnant or have a child under five, that they would automatically qualify for the WIC program. And we call that adjunctive eligibility. Okay, so a lot of families do not know that. So it's not necessarily that they have to be under the 185th percentile of the federal poverty level. If they are receiving Medi-Cal, CalFresh, CalWorks, and they're pregnant, less than five, uh, children less than five, they would automatically qualify. You'll get some information about getting results with WIC. We have noticed uh, an increase in exclusively breastfeeding moms and also to uh, children who are less obese and have a less incidence of uh, anemia. And so we are, are always ensuring to see, to follow up with um, our, 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 our moms and children to ensure that they're going towards the right path. Here are WIC services again. And then uh, with the WIC program, uh, overall, who is providing the WIC services? So we have registered dietitians, we have international board lactation consultants, uh, we have peer counselors, uh, nutrition program assistants, all free for our clientele. And so that's one of the things that we like to promote because a lot of times what ends up happening is that uh, there are some individuals that have to reach out to registered dietitians or what have you, and sometimes they kind of have to wait or for, for maybe a referral, or maybe it's not covered under their insurance or what have you here, participant in the WIC program, they're at the uh, reach of a phone call and they can connect with the registered dietitian for any, any nutritional questions that they may have in regards to themselves, their infants or their children. Okay, oops, sorry. Okay, you can, can, you can um, access the therapeutic formula information also here. Here's the medical nutrition uh, formula request form, okay? And then also we have here our uh, main office number. The easiest way for clients to apply for the WIC program would be to text apply at the 91997 text number. They can always go onto our website and complete an application, not a problem. But it, it seems like clients, uh, it makes it so much easier to just text. And we have uh, hundreds of staff that uh, respond to the text messaging system. So we're able to connect with the client pretty, pretty quickly, okay? I do encourage you if you can to sign up for our WIC emails because that's where you'll be able to get the what's uh, happening at WIC, what's new. And as I mentioned before, things are going gradually, but we hope that uh, in the near future, we're able to see uh, hopefully some changes that we're advocating for, right? And there's things about um, there's a gap in between having children that are five and six that are not receiving uh, nutritional services, right? And so and those are the types of things that we're trying to strive to work for, trying to have uh, postpartum women participate up to uh, at least up to two years after postpartum. But again, you know, that's not what's uh, what we're offering now, but we're working towards it. So who knows, maybe sometime in the future, we may see those changes. But the, the change that is coming in the near future that will be able to be that we will be able to see is changes in the food package. And so look out for those changes in the food package because there is going to be uh, uh, additions of like fish for children and 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 women. Uh, there's also going to be uh, choices of milk products. And so uh, it would be great to be able to uh, get that information and you'll be able to see it if you are in, in um, registered to receive updates on the WIC program. Very easy to be able to click on there so that you can get these updates. There are updates that I will be able to have on our uh, landing page as well. 
another thing that I didn't uh, quite mention also is that every summer, our clients are able to get access to fresh to additional fresh fruits and vegetables through our farmer's market program. And that happens one time a year, where this year we were able to offer an extra $30 to purchase fresh fruits and vegetables. And some farmer's markets were able to match a certain dollar amount so that our families were able to get a, a certain number of fresh fruits and vegetables for the summer. And that usually happens every summer, so we look forward to it. If there's any changes, you will definitely see it on our website. Okay. All right. So um, one of the things that I also wanted to uh, show you, uh, which I will in a bit, is that we do have flyers. And so uh, I did have a quick meeting with uh, Steve and uh, Amy, I believe it is, yesterday. And so she has the link that will be provided to all of you attending today so that you have our flyers and they're on a Google Drive. And they're easily accessible. So if you wanted to print them out and you're while you're at um, your office, not a problem. I'll show you in a bit. And so with our flyers, uh, you're able to print them in English or Spanish. And then they have our contact information. And there's also a QR code that you can use if, if there's a need uh, to use a QR code, if it's easier accessible for um, your clientele to be able to get connected to the WIC program. Okay. Let me go ahead and see if I can get pull that up. The Google Toolkit uh, here that will be shared with you. There's multiple flyers to choose from that you'll be able to uh, use. Um, again, they're in English and Spanish to be able to download. We do have other um, languages, Arabic here. And then I want to say we just worked on a Russian uh, a flyer which I don't see that it's up here now, but we'll definitely put it up there for uh, for for if you need to have um, access to one of our um, Russian flyers. Okay. All right. So that's pretty much it on my end. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing. So if you all have any questions for myself, for Cindy, uh, um, by all means, you know, feel free to ask. Uh, if you want to put any questions on the chat, uh, you can. In a moment, I'm, I'm going to put our contact information in the chat as well. Uh, if you want to connect with one of us in outreach, I'll go ahead and put our outreach email. We do have a lot of uh, collaborating-based organizations, medical offices that will refer their clients through our outreach email, and that's okay too. We have um, quite a few outreach staff members that will be able to uh, reach out to the referred client. Okay. All right, and then I can share the PowerPoint with Steve as well, and I'll show the Google Drive just in case if you guys uh, need to access it later. Oh, thank you, Amy, for putting the flyers on the chat. I welcome your question. Anybody? I'm sure there are questions. There's, I know there are questions. That was a lot. You definitely were very comprehensive in the coverage of all that great information, but um, I'm sure there are questions. <laughs> I can start. Um, I've got a little one. You mentioned that the um, the uh, help the breastfeeding helpline is available to anybody regardless of WIC participation. Um, what about the support groups the, that you have available? Are those also open no matter even if somebody is maybe at another WIC agency or um, you know Northeast Valley Health Corp. We have folks in the Valley or Lundquist and South LA, Long Beach WIC. I know we have others down there too. Um, is there anything is I guess what I'm asking about is, is if there's exclusively PHFE WIC programs that others aren't are not allowed to participate in. So the English and Spanish groups are really big. So those we usually have only limited to our WIC participants, but all of the other specialty languages we offer to the community. So you don't have to be a WIC participant. You could be a community member joining or from another WIC agency. 
So we, um, we do advertise those um, like Blanca showed on our website um, and then um, send out invitations related to the requests that we're getting uh, with the Zoom links. So yes, people can participate in those, but the English and Spanish, usually those are offered at um, each WIC agency. So they would go to their own WIC agency to get that support. Okay, great. That's helpful. Thank you, Cindy. Yes. yes. And I see another question in the chat about uh, pumps. And uh, the pumps were uh, the one section I talked about that um, if uh, after the mom has her baby and if she's is breastfeeding and the staff do an assessment with her and the mom um, needs a pump to either establish or maintain a milk supply, then yes, we will work on her on the appropriate type of pump that would um, help her meet her breastfeeding goals. And uh, we could loan that to her, um, you know, as long as she's a WIC participant. So um, we also have manual pumps. So if it's a temporary breastfeeding um, problem that the mom isn't wanting to pump long-term, we could also give her a manual pump. And then um, after she has breastfed for a little while, um, we actually use the criteria of two months and the milk supply is established. Then the participant would be eligible for a personal pump, which they'd be able to keep and we wouldn't be asking for that back, um, for her to return that back when she was done breastfeeding. So I hope that answered the question. I see another one uh, from Lydia. How do hospitals apply for programs that provide pumps through WIC? So uh, right now um, we, have the pumps as our limiting factor. So we are currently at our max capacity of eight hospitals because we don't have enough pumps to put more pumps in the hospitals and also have enough pumps for our participants. But if you would like to be considered, you have hospitals that you think would be interested in applying, please reach out to me and I'll forward um, the name to our regional breastfeeding liaisons, Wendy Fung and Naira, who are keeping a list, sort of a waiting list of hospitals that as soon as we have more pumps, which we're hoping to get starting in January, then we will start adding hospitals um, as we have the resource available. So I think we have three pumps in the wings right now that are, uh, sorry, three hospitals in the wings right now that are waiting to come on board. But um, again, as we get more pumps, we may be able to bring on several hospitals at one time because we do know that this is such a valuable, um, a, such a valuable resource for our families to have this continuity of care um, when they're discharged from the hospital before they can connect with WIC. So Lydia, if you want to either direct message me or email me, then um, I would be happy to um, connect with you. Thank you. I do see a, a question in the chat for WIC participants that do come into the offices. Do you have welcome baby flyers available to them to pick up? Okay, so this is a really great question. And this is something that we discussed yesterday with Steve. It would be really great to be able to connect the outreach welcome baby specialist with one of our WIC centers. And I want to give a shout out to Tina for being able for connecting with Sheila and her WIC centers. And that's what makes a really great collaboration is to be able to connect the appropriate outreach specialist with the area. And so we do have uh, physical flyers and uh, but we're not yet connected with each outreach specialist. And that's what we're going to be working on to ensure that there's a better connection between Welcome Baby and the WIC program. Uh, hence is the reason why I'm going to connect also provide information about our sister agencies as well, because we overlap in LA County. And so we want to ensure that all our clients are be able, will be able to uh, get information about the Welcome Baby program. So yes, we do. I As from what I do know now, there are four, five, six, yes, yeah, six WIC centers that do have the uh, physical flyers. And then we use the, the link. But just remember that not all our clientele do walk into the WIC center, but the majority are virtual. 
Okay. We were told in the past, because um, we have had meetings with sites so that we used to partner with pre-COVID, that we needed permission from whoever was in charge at top um, to be able to have flyers in office. And so I was just curious about that and if something changed. Yeah, generally from what, and I do have Kelly Orseo here who is also, uh, uh, was working in the front lines as a supervisor out in the WIC centers, a nutritionist. And so from what I remember out from centers, we did have physical, we actually had the like application which had like a check mark as to when we asked our clientele where they were delivering. And so that way, once we completed the, like it was like an intake form, we would fax it out to that uh, location. So for example, I'm very familiarized with the Providence um, Welcome Baby Program. And so, because I generally used to just work in like in the South Bay area. So anyone that would say, oh, I'm, I'm delivering at San Pedro Hospital or Torrance Memorial, or um, Long Beach, I think it's St. Mary's, I believe. Then we would go ahead and uh, check off, send it out. And uh, that's how we would uh, connect our clientele. Now, because they're not coming in, mm -hmm. we just send them the link. And so they have to go in and click to see, okay, where do I fit in? But Denise, um, if you'd like, yeah. I'm gonna put my email. Mm -hmm. Connect with me to let me know, or or maybe with I'll, I'll, uh, if the plan is to work with Steve to connect outreach representatives to our centers, we'll go that route, and then we'll go ahead and connect. Does that sound good? That sounds wonderful. Thank you so much. No problem, Denise. Thank you for asking the question. I think it was a really great question. And just to follow up on there, just to make sure everybody's clear, we'll, we will follow up to make sure that all of the outreach specialists are matched up with the WIC uh, sites that are in their areas and we can exchange contact information both ways. That's something I was going to add on really quick. Sorry if I can jump in. Mm -hmm. um, our plan was so Steve was going to send us a list of the sites you guys are going to be visiting so that Blanca and myself can send a heads up to the staff at the centers to expect somebody from the welcome baby to drop off flyers because yes, that's still the protocol. They still have to get uh, approval for us to um, for to be able to display any referrals, but we are gonna give them the go ahead ahead of time. Um, as you guys are out there doing that, you may experience where maybe the staff missed the email or maybe, I don't know, things happen. Um, if they do ask you to do that, um, you know, I am I apologize ahead of time. I hope it doesn't happen because I'm planning on letting them all know um, to expect you guys um, and just to know that you guys are going to pop in to drop off some flyers. So if you guys want to, but as Blanca mentioned, most of our services are through telehealth appointments. Um, so like I'd say maybe two participants come in a day, depending on the clinic, um, but for the most part, it's all by the phone so that the link is the most helpful. And then just connecting, um, as Blanca mentioned, connecting with the centers. Um, so Blanca, Steve and I are gonna help coordinate that. So you guys can all connect with um, the staff as well so that they are familiar with you guys too. And then also, um, I, we're going to also post a uh, posting just to re-invite staff to look at the Welcome Baby program information and just let them know about it um, because we have had a lot of new staff. Um, so staff may not be as familiar with the Welcome Baby program. Um, so we do plan on making like a general post for that for all of our staff to know what the program is. So yeah, great question. I do see a question from, and let's see, Amy, how soon after a client has reached out to WIC from the hospital are they contacted? From the hospital. Does that mean in regards to the pumps or to apply for, for, for WIC? I believe that's a pump closet question because I know I want to, oh, yeah, I believe that's a pump closet question. I'm not sure. So in regards to the pump closet, uh, the, the hospitals actually have the pumps at the hospital. So the participant is leaving the hospital with the pump. They fax us the loan agreement, which is the participant has given consent for them to do. 
And then the next business day, I would say within one business day, we're reaching out to that client in order to enroll that, enroll the baby onto the WIC program. Um, or if the baby's in the NICU or something like that to connect with the mom. So uh, yeah, we, it's a really, really fast turnaround once we receive the information from the hospital. Yeah, yeah. And uh, let's see, Lydia. Uh, yes, a lot of our sister uh, agencies still see clientele on site. And so uh, Northeast Valley is one. And so it's so much easier when an, an individual uh, is on site because we have the referrals right there, as I was mentioning. And, and when you're there with a client face to face, you know, you want to be able to connect with them and call. It's not, I'm not saying that we can't by phone, but it's just so much easier in person because you have the sheet there, you fill it out there, you fax it in and it's, and it's there. When you're teleworking, you don't have that ability. You don't have a fax uh, to be able to fax it. So it's totally up to the client. So I'm really glad to hear that you're connecting with uh, Northeast Valley WIC. Uh, let's see, I saw another one. Well, can I, oh, oh sorry, can I respond to the rest of Amy's question? So I oh, think she was also asking about how fast um, a participant could expect to receive services after they have their baby, I think is what she's asking. I'm not connected to the pump closet. So um, we, um, we work with participants to text the word baby um, to us as soon as their baby is born. And we try to get the babies enrolled again. We're pretty fast with that. That That's a high priority. If we see that word baby coming in, that we connect with them right away, knowing that we have a really short window to provide breastfeeding support without you know jeopardizing milk supply and things like that. So we are really up on the the baby texts our newborns. Now, if the mom doesn't text baby, you know, the staff probably have some sort of, depending on what center they're at, probably once a week, they're checking in with a mom who's around her due date. So, you know, there could be a little bit of a delay if the mom's not reaching out to us. But if the mom's reaching out to us, I would say, you know, again, within one business day, I would, I would think in almost all cases, we're trying to connect with her. So I hope that answered your question. I think it'd be helpful to explain too. So if a participant texts us the word apply or they fill out an application on our website, uh, we do have a guidance that we have to get to them within 20 days and 10 days for prenatal. So we have to let them know if they are income eligible within that time frame. Um, so that's usually our goal. Our agency goal is five days. So we do try to get to them within five days to get them connected with services. I say try to because sometimes uh, they don't answer our calls or they're not responding or we have they typed in their phone number incorrectly. So it's, sometimes it's a little bit harder to get a, connected with them. Um, but our goal agency goal is five days, but our like mandated goal is 10 to 20 days. So just a little explanation on that as well. Trying to see if there are any other questions going through. Looks like we answered all the questions. Feel free, I'll go ahead, once again, I'll go ahead and put our contact information. It'll also be in the PowerPoint in the event that you wanna connect with either myself, Cindy or Sagrario with any questions that you may have not a problem, we'll definitely um, be able to respond. If we don't have the answer at that moment, we'll definitely get uh, the answer to follow up with you. Can I throw out one more? I've got one. Of course. Yeah. Um, and actually, maybe this is more for uh, outreach specialists for Welcome Baby, um, but I think it might be helpful for all of us to hear. As we're going through this, I know that there are are a lot of um, services, like especially breastfeeding support, um, an emphasis on trying to support families with that uh, is also something that Welcome Baby and all home visiting programs are big on. So my question really is, 
if an OS were to contact or to talk to a family and they say, well, I'm already getting this kind of support, what's the response in terms of, you know, how how is this, how, how is Welcome Baby complimentary and uh, also going to help and not just be redundant? I think that I just thought that might help for our WIC friends to hear as well. So anybody want to want to Go ahead and represent all Welcome Baby uh, outreach and give that one a shot. Can I, can I say something? Go well, for it, I'm, Tina. I'm not yeah. planning to represent nobody. Oh, come on. Yeah. But, you're the best but I will represent our Welcome Baby. Um, I think it's very helpful working together and collaborate because, in a way, we're working towards the same goals. So if we can use WEEK to reinforce and to help and to make it easier flowing with breastfeeding with our clients and we doing the same thing, I think is 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 just the, the perfect partners. Because uh I don't do the home visits, but when I see mommies that you know have a question, so when I do the intakes and we talk about planning of so breastfeeding and I do inform our clients about our the parent coaches being certified with lactation or or sometimes they call and and you know when they have issues with breastfeeding our first response is like, do you have weak? Can you call them? They they do have the, the hotline and they will be able to help you with this. And even in my, and the intakes, one of the question is, do you have weak? And the first thing, oh no, I don't. Okay, let me send you the text number or let me send you the website so you can apply. And I kind of updating them like they don't take walk-ins. You have to have an appointment. They do hybrid. I mean, kind of like fill them in with what the expectations, it is a big help. It is an, and it's a big help for both of us, for the and especially for the patient. First, for the client is first. And then that gives a good results for both, for the week because it helps them flow in the work better. And for us, because it's one of the things that we follow if they have week or, and, and it helps with breastfeeding. So it does, if we can work in this together and constantly be, focus on the needs of the client, it, I mean, it does work and it will be work even better. Hi, Steve, uh, this is Lydia. You know, I see it as a wraparound type of thing. You know, uh, you have WIC and then you have the welcome baby from the hospitals. I remember back in the day, I was a young, you know, mother at the time in the 1980s, I had my babies, they were all, I had WIC at the time, it would have been nice at the time had I still also had the hospital involved in my life, right? Um, so now today with these moms who can get WIC and welcome baby, not only are they receiving the WIC services, but the hospital is still a part of their life postpartum as well, right? So I like to see it as it's a great, trans welcome baby, such a great transition from hospital to home, the the the, well, the hospital is still a part of your life. They're helping with it, that transition. And now you got WIC involved as well. So it's a great wraparound. And that's how I do like to sell it to my clients. Um, you're receiving still the expertise from the medic, from the, you know, the medical expertise, as well as WIC in addition. And WIC will probably work with you a lot longer as well. So it's a great wraparound. Thanks, Lydia. Yeah, thanks, Tina. Those were those were terrific. And uh, also, I just want to point out uh, Felipe's comment in the chat as well, uh, talking a bit more about other services that go uh, beyond what what WIC focuses on. You know, some of the depression, anxiety screenings, uh, child development screenings, that sort of thing as well. Yes, definitely, Sarah. I'm so sorry, Steve, but I do agree with your uh, comment. We have many refugees coming into the uh, country, and you're coming into a country, don't know the language, don't know the area, don't know anything. Maybe you're here by yourself and what have you. They're scared. And so when they have connected to someone that they start building trust and loyalty with, by all means, ensuring that uh, a program such as WIC is definitely safe for our families to participate in is a great thing. 
Um, we are currently seeing uh, a rise in families who speak Russian that are coming in from the Ukraine as refugees participating in the WIC program. Steve, I just wanted to also respond to your question. And um, Tina, thank you for your response. And I was actually talking to my team about this today, about how we can support people we collaborate with. And I think um, what we are starting to, what we start out, want to start, you know, having staff do is ask, what, what did that program tell you? Or what did that provider recommend to you? And that way you can then support the other program you can see what the participant or the client knows, and then you can fill in the gaps. So I, I really am going to try to start, you know, using that language with my team so that we can then, you know, really, again, the wraparound is a great way to, 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 to talk about it, like Lydia said. And I think if we say, what did you learn or what did, what do you, what did they tell you? Then it gives you just a really great way to open a conversation and fill in the gaps of what um, knowledge or services they may be missing. See, I knew there were questions. Plenty. That's that was a, a lot of great discussion. Thank you, everybody, for that. Thank you. Uh, thank you all, all to our PHFE WIC friends for uh, for the great presentation here. I um, I don't want to cut us off. We do have more time if there are more questions. Um, I can. Sorry, naturally, I get a phone call right when I'm talking. Sorry about that. Is there a possibility to possibly, I mean, I know Steve, we um, talked yesterday and would have you, but I definitely would like to hear from the outreach specialist on uh, once referral is uh, sent out from the WIC program, um, what eligibility criteria is uh, assessed so that one knows that they qualify for the Welcome Baby program? That's a great one, Blanca. Anyone want to take that? Number one, they have to be pregnant. <laughs> Number two, they have to be delivering at that certain hospital. So we worked closely with the Canoga Park WIC because they're in our locality to Northridge Hospital. And a lot of their um, clients will deliver at Northridge Hospital. So it's really a good marriage because um, not, you know, they, we get the referral from WIC. Usually the girl says, oh, we have a client. They're going to deliver at Northridge Hospital. They're part of WIC. Since they're going to be at your hospital, they are eligible for the Welcome Baby program because they're pregnant and they're delivering there. And then I'll get the referral. And then we work together. Wonderful, Lydia. Thank you. Are there any other criteria? Is it just wow. um, pregnant and then delivering at a, at a hospital that participate? Uh, it's, it's pretty much what um, Lydia said. Uh, last time I was visiting one of the week sites, uh, she mentioned that one of the ladies said like, okay, but we do have mummies that come just from all over, not in a specific area, right? How do we know? Uh, what I tell them is like to make it easier on them to remember is just as long as they deliver in, in their hospitals that is on the list. So I provide them the referral form. And mm -hmm. then I said, just check on the list. And if the list and uh, if they client says, or the recipient said, I'm delivering at this hospital, that's your hospital, then you send the referral. So that, that, that's your best uh, uh, shot. And then let them find out what they qualify, if it's for the full services or it's only for postpartum services. Because for them, it's like, what if they don't qualify for this or for that? I, I just tell them like, keep a handy that referral form, check on the list of the hospitals, and then you send it to that hospital that they deliver, regardless where they live, because we do get some mommies that live in LA, but they want to deliver it here in our hospital and vice versa. You know, they live in this area, but they want to deliver at uh, LA hospitals, right? So that was my, my suggestion to the ladies of the week that just check on the list of the hospitals, fax it to that hospital that they are choosing to delivery and then we go from there. Okay, so I did notice somebody put on there also their address. Like, is that their home address? 
Yes, it can be for the home address, but also uh, if they they have a home address in a different area that is not, uh, you know, is not uh, together with the hospital, it's actually what hospital they're using. I mean, oh. but it can also be by the address. Oh, it can also be by the address. Yeah, so by the if... address and by the hospital as mm -hmm. well, because mm -hmm. they can they can receive our service our services between two hospitals. If we have our mommy that delivers here at Queen of the Valley, but live in LA, uh, between the Wacom Baby program in LA and the Wacom Baby program here at Queen, uh, together we will provide the services. Mm. Yeah, we would really need to assess uh, just individually because mm -hmm. we even have clients that are in shelters or have insecure housing. So it's kind of like on a case by case that we would need to further assess like their individual situation, but we do cross refer between programs. So we're gonna make sure that they're connected to a service regardless. Even if they're not welcome baby eligible, we have other home visiting programs yeah. within the first five network that we can refer if they're not specifically eligible for a welcome baby. We have parents as teachers, we have Healthy Families America, and we can find them another service um, in the home visiting network. And we also uh, have NFP. Mm -hmm, and nurse family partnership as well. Oh, yes, yes. Okay, perfect. So basically, if somebody uh, we referred and for whatever odd reason they didn't qualify for the service, you would provide them with an additional or some other opportunity to participate in another uh, program that provides resources and services. Yes, okay. correct. Okay. Okay. Very nice. Wonderful. Do any of my other, like Kelly, any of the questions that you may have in regards to Welcome Baby? All right. Well, thank you again for uh, so much great information, taking the time to present all this. Um, and so many great questions, too, going all ways. That was that was really a great great discussion. I think uh, helpful, and obviously we're going to continue to work together. We're going to um, try to make sure that all the outreach specialists are connected to all the sites, the WIC sites that they want to work with, and uh, and vice versa. So, thank you all again for that.